Let's try. <laughs> one, two, one, two. That's a six to seven pound roaster. Roaster. And depending on I how barely many know them. people, <laughs> depending on how many people you have to feed is how how and large. This is a wing, and this is the other one. There you go. Now see, it kind of comes like this. I'm showing you that on purpose because we got to tuck those under, right? That's right. Is that the first thing I'm doing? You can do that. Go ahead and do that. Okay. So I guess you have to put in here, right? Oh yeah. Go ahead and put okay. it in that. Can I bring this here? Absolutely. If you put it on your board, you just have to remember to clean the we board. We have to wash the board because it's chicken. That's right. Now, if you... Now, first thing you, we're going to do Bring is the tip forward away from you. Like <laughs> this? <laughs> no, forward. Like that? Yeah, that. Then way. we tuck it under here. Exactly. Okay. There you go. And then there goes See the other one that. See how under there nicely? Yeah, very nice. Now, next thing we know, we need to pull out the inside. That's right. These are the giblets. Giblets. That's the broad term for it. <laughs> Nothing is actually a giblet. Anything inside the chicken is giblets. Okay. Chicken and giblets. So what's in there? It's a bag. bag. And they come this way in a bag. That's right. The chicken in real life doesn't have a little plastic bag in it that holds all its internal <laughs> organs. But in here we have basically what runs the chicken. Runs <laughs> the chicken? Well, name the some heart. parts we have in here. There's the neck. The neck. The heart. The heart. Kidneys. Kidneys. Liver. Liver. Great. Maybe we could save that for Mickey. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to crisscross the legs, right? No, first you want to stuff it. Oh, we're going to stuff it. That's right. That's right. Absolutely. Now, I didn't put the chicken on the block yet. No, you didn't. But so I have can... chicken on my hand. Oh, you can rinse so it So I need to rinse them off before I put that in. Yes. Is that true? That's true. Now, you want the chicken to sit on the counter for about oh, 15 or 20 minutes so that if you take it out of the refrigerator, so it warms up. Because if you take a cold chicken, just put it in the oven... The inside's going to be really cold, and the, the outside's, outside's going to cook, cook faster. And so you want to make sure it's thawed, too, because some, do you get them frozen sometimes? Oh, yeah, or you is can that buy them frozen. Okay. And you thaw them in the refrigerator. Don't thaw them on your counter. Okie doke. Now we're going to put half of an onion in. Half of an onion in. And half of a lemon. And half a lemon. And now this, one, will add flavor, correct? Mm -hmm. And two, it will help keep the cavity of the chicken full. That's right. So it doesn't kind of dry out and collapse. And then you kind of go, remember once you had giblets, now you have an onion in you. Once you had an onion, you have a lemon. There you go. Okay. Now you got that in there? There you go. Now we're going to crisscross the legs. Now you're going to crisscross the legs. Now we want to crisscross the legs to kind of close this up, because that will also help the cooking process for one. And for two, if you leave the legs out like this, this little part here is obviously much smaller than the rest of the bird here. So this would dry out and get real crunchy and nasty early. So if we do this little crisscross trick, which we're going to use with the flaps of the skin here, it should be okay. Now I'm going to take my paring knife and make a slice in the skin there. And we're going to do both sides so that when we cross the first one, we will be able to cross the second one and be ready. Because you're going to see what's going to happen. I'm going to pull the leg across, get the hole, Slippery, isn't it? Slippery when chicken. Turn it this way so everybody can see. Oh, it broke, Kathy. Well, that's okay. That's okay? It's a cool technique, but at the same time, you know what? What? You can't leave it open. I've done that before. At the same time, I bet I could probably maybe pin this down. Get the see other one. See what you can do. See what I can do? Yeah. If it works. Mm -hmm. That's great. Got one in there? There you go. Tuck the other one in. Tuck the other one under? That's fine. He's happy. He'll roast. He's, he's happy. He'll roast just Get them both in this one? If you want to try it, you can. Oh, I don't know. I'm trying. Gymnastics. It's yoga for the chicken. <laughs> yoga? I like that. That's good, Kathy. <laughs> it's got its mantra working right now. Okay, so we got one of them there. That's now we want to do a rub the on the chicken, basically. Rub some garlic on there. I'm going to rub some garlic on here. Now, if you notice, we have our garlic, which garlic is usually separated for whatever it's used for, and our salt and pepper we have out on a plate. Because in case there was a problem with the chicken, as far as bacteria is concerned, we don't want it to contaminate our regular stock of salt or pepper. That's right. So we're going to rub it in garlic. Mmm. <laughs> I like garlic. Yeah? Cool. Feeling good? Got a little rubbing? A little tense there, Bert? A little tense? It's okay. <laughs> Here we are. Now we'll put our salt and pepper on. Salt and pepper. 
that. A little pepper. Rub that all over. Rub it all over. Ooh. A little exfoliant there, right? Wow. Nifty. Now, before you even begin this, you always have to remember to preheat your oven. Yep, and we have preheated it at 425 degrees. That's right. And why is it so high, the temperature? Um, I would assume because it takes a while to cook a chicken <laughs> and a lot of heat. It does, but the high heat will help to sear the skin of the chicken. Mm -hmm. So that helps keep all the juices in. I'm still fixated It'll on it. It'll make this. a moist bird. Moist bird? Moist bird. You're just determined to get that on. I'm you? determined to pull this off. Made another hole. Ah! <laughs> There you go. Now it's all together. Now I got the other one missing. <laughs> there you go. Looks great. Got it. In a tight little package. Now I'm going to put this it. in. That's it. You just put it in. Put it in. Into the oven you'll go. There you're going to roast it for how many minutes per pound? Uh, you're going to do about 10 minutes per pound. 10 minutes per pound? Yes. That's the way we're going to do it. So this is now it. we're going to go to break. Look, oh. Is he coming in? Oh, He's my He's sneaking gosh, in. Look who's this? here. It's Curtis Aiken. <laughs> Curtis, I'm making meat, though. I'm oh, making no. chicken. See you later. Where are you going? <laughs> You're making meat. No, come on, hang out. Yeah? Yeah, we're going to a break anyway. Okay. Look, Curtis, there's a picture of you in my fridge. Oh, really? It's me, you, and Robin over here. Isn't that cool? I love it. That's so sweet. Have you shown the folks at home? Yeah, they've seen it. Okay. Cur Curtis Aikens, Meals Without Meat, one of my favorite shows. <laughs> we'll be back with How to Boil Water right after this, so stay tuned. How you been? Good. I got garlic on my hands. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I get a hug, though. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give me the, my chicken rub. I don't want to give you chicken bacteria, you know? How are you? Good, I'm fine. Yeah. You're crazy, huh? Love that music. Yeah. See, so, you know, we, we pulled off the shot of, of Barney Rubble. This is my impression of Barney Rubble playing the drums on the Flintstones. <laughs> That's exactly what he does. Thanks. So it was on the mark. The yeah. impression was on the mark. Hello, and welcome back to How to Boil Water. Sean Dillon, Kathy, culinary guru. Chicken recently roasted. I'm introducing the looks chicken. Looks beautiful, huh? doesn't it? Yeah, it looks right. like it came out good. Check it right. out. Golden Very nice, skin. and you see how like the garlic gets nice and crispy on there, and it looks really good. So we're going to show them how to cut it up, right? Well, first, you want to tell them how to how they know when the chicken's done. Excellent point. If the chicken's not done, then you can't cut it. So what we need to do is we can take a thermometer, and this is known as an instant thermometer, mm -hmm. and you want to stick it in, and you want to see you want it to read 160 degrees, but you want to stick it in somewhere in the back here where it's very meaty, because you don't want to put it in somewhere where it can touch to the bone, because the bone will get it hotter a lot faster. So you'd want to stick it in in the back, in here. Somewhere in between the leg and the breast. Yeah, like about here, right? More towards the leg. Because the leg is the, uh, see, it's kind of really fat down there. So. Right. It's hot. And the breast meat always cooks very quickly. Right. So you would check it that way. Now, you were telling me a few other ways you could check if you don't happen to have one of these thermometers, which you could probably get. They're not too expensive, are they? No, they're not. No big deal, no biggie there. Now, one of them was by taking a knife and pressing on the skin. Well, you make a little slit in the side of the leg. Oh, you do? Yep, little poke a hole. Like poke a hole, like Pocahontas? <laughs> yes. <laughs> poke -a and then you press on it. And you if the juices come out clear, Right. Which they are. Which See they right are. There? Then it's done. Then it's done. Now, the other one was you could say you could wiggle the leg. Right. This is kind of like doing the hokey pokey. Hokey pokey hantus. <laughs> you wiggle the leg like this, and the leg's really loose. Right. It's ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Look at the lemon sticking out there. Woo! Woo! How embarrassing. <laughs> Cover that up. <laughs> it's on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Your lemon sticking out. Give it yourself. So. Now we will show you how to cut apart the chicken, to carve the chicken. Yep. Now, preparing it was easy. Now this is the part where people might panic again and say, oh, no, I could not carve the chicken. It is hard for me. No. Very easy. Now, if I can do it, you can do it. That's what we always say. Now, here's our carving knife. First thing, you've got to tell them to let the bird rest. Sit. 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 Stay. Why? Good chicken. Why? I'll tell you why, Kathy. Okay. 
Because <laughs> if you cut it too soon, if you cut it like right as, as it comes out of the oven, if you cut it too soon, all the juices are going to run all over the place. And they're going to run out of the bird, basically. If you let it sit for about 15 minutes, they'll stay in there. You'll have nice, juicy meat. That's right. Good. See? Very good. I knew that. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take the leg off. First thing you do is take off the leg. I'm just going to cut down. Just cut, out, cut down on it. Cut down on it. <laughs> cut down <laughs> on it. Now, I'm going to try to just that little skin that we had there. Now, you see the joint? See how it breaks out like that? Isn't that great? Now, cut it at the joint. Just cut it at the joint. Working. There it's go. hard to cut at the joint. Well, you got to find the joint if you find the right place. See how it comes right off there? there oh, I had the wrong go. place. Yeah, you had the wrong place. Good thing I knew that. I didn't realize the joint was actually covered at that point. If it's hard to do, then you got the wrong place. There you go. Should be very like butter. <laughs> I don't know if it was like butter, but it was easy. <laughs> do you want to do the other one? Try the other leg. Try the other leg? Yeah, because I think you can do it. I think I can do it, too. Now, you can go all the way through to the bottom. Just keep going straight down. There you go. I've hit bottom. Crack it. What do you Kathy, I've hit bottom. Hit bottom. Now, there you go. That was much easier. See? You're absolutely correct, Kathy. Thank you. I wish you could I... just peel right off like that. There you go. There we go. Two legs. Two you legs. want a drumstick? Ooh, I want... There's just pictures of me and, like, Thanksgiving dinner as a kid. And I always wanted the drumstick. And it's, like, the size of my torso. Because <laughs> <laughs> we'd have, like, you know, I don't know. My grandmother would have, like, 85,000 people over. And you know, the drumstick would be this big, and I, I could probably take like three bites out of it, but there's pictures of me like, it's like this, though. Big turkey. It's like one of those Fred Flintstone ones. It goes with Barney. <laughs> one of those Fred Flintstone huge things. Now we're going to cut the breast. We're going to cut the breast. Okay. So you're going to slice it right down the middle. Right down the middle from the breastbone. That's right. Okay. So I think you find the breastbone. Yep. You can feel it right there. You can there. almost see it. There's almost like a line right there. There's a yeah. fine line. That's right. Now just go straight down. Now you're gonna, that's the breastbone that you hit. Right. And now you can just peel the meat off with your fingertips. Like this. Yep, now, yep, just go. I'm just feeling the breastbone. There you go. You got it. Oh my God! This Come chicken has a lemon in it! <laughs> uh, there you go. Now. Breast. Of course your hands are washed and clean when you're doing this, right? Absolutely. I washed them just before or after I hugged Curtis. I know. I saw you do it. <laughs> okay, so... Now, this other one I could probably just pull off without cutting, or should I cut it as well? You can pull it off. You got another bird, though. You want to show him another way to do it? Yes, I will. Okay. So we'll move this aside. Set him aside. I feel like I've done, <laughs> done him wrong now. <laughs> no, you it's haven't. kind of left him hanging there. Tastes really good. I did what I had to do with you, and now I must move on. Okay. I must show the people something else. So we have another bird. <laughs> now, this is another way you can do it. You can do it using kitchen scissors. Now, sometimes I've said before, if you don't have kitchen scissors, you can use regular scissors if you want to, like to snip up parsley. But for this, you want to use kitchen scissors because you do need a hearty, strong scissor. That's right. So you could do basically the same thing that we did with the knife just by snip snipping. There you go. See that? You can also find the joint the same way. There you go. Boom. Pretty good. Pretty good. Now do the same thing right up the middle. Up the Start now. from the behind. Yep, start from there. I'm sorry. I know I hardly know you. <laughs> you just cut it up like that. Cut it up like that. And cut the side a little bit. Don't cut the side down here? No, right here. This might help you to cut through there. Okay. There you go. And off it comes. Off it comes. And of course, with a little practice. And there it goes. We would make perfect. It would be perfect. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> the wing? Show me how to do the wing. Does the wing pull off? The wing just pulls right off. <laughs> what? You didn't think it would? No. All right. See that? Why it's not supposed to? No, it looks perfect. Oh, okay. Great. Cool. Okay. What do uh, you like with chicken? Wavy. Gravy. Wavy. All right. We like gravy with our chicken. Mm -hmm. Now, it's safe to move on to something else now that the chicken's cooked. Go for it. Is that correct? Now the chicken's cooked. In 
correct chicken preparation safety? That's right. Right ho there, Kathy. Let's go. All right. Now what we have here is we have our drippings from our chicken after it's been cooked. This is kind of being very environmental. So we're using everything that we have in here. Now don't so stir the first it up. thing you want to do. What? I just don't stir it up because now you want to get the grease off. You want to get some of the fat off. That's right. But Kathy tells me that her mom leaves some of the fat in. Just adds a bit of flavor. Yes? Yeah. That's Back me up on that. I don't want to be out here talking about your mom and that's true. not be saying the, okay, that's the right enough. thing. Good enough. Next, we are going to mix some flour and water. Add the stock. Oh, we're going to add chicken stock. Add the chicken stock. About a cup. All those brown bits up off the bottom of the pan. Get all these brown bits up off the bottom of the pan. Here, I'll do that, and you can make the paste. Oh, well, you make the paste. I'm already involved. Make the paste. All right. Get all the brown bits off the bottom of the pan, because this is concentrated chicken flavor, <laughs> basically, because it's all kind of, it's almost caramelized in a way. So we just have... Two tablespoons of flour. You used a big cooking term and you ignored me. Caramelized. Very good. Very good. I appreciate it. Thing I do. Here, <laughs> yes, I do. Now, with this flour mixture, is just adding some water to flour. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a little bit of this to our potential gravy at a time. Yes. Ready to add some? Make a little. Can't taste. add it all at once because it's just going to get all clumpy and weird, and you don't want that. So you can whisk, and I'll pour. There you go. I'm whisking. You crank up the heat. It is. There you go. I'm whisking, she's pouring, and when we come back, gravy will be made. Looks good. Yes. When we come back, we're going to put it all together. Yep. Put our whole chicken dinner together, right at a nice plate on how to boil water. When we come back, right after this, and uh, season it with a little salt. What do you, you, you want to host the show now? <laughs> what do you, salt, pepper? Pepper. Pepper. Out of the pepper. I'm going to take it from the dog. That's a salt dog. That's a pepper. No, that's a salt dog. Wait, it's white pepper. Welcome back to How to Boil Water. Sean Donnell in here, and we're showing our complete chicken meal. Now, this is a chicken that we took and we roasted ourselves. As you watched, we showed you how to do it. It's not as complicated as you think, and it's actually a lot cheaper for you to go out and buy a whole chicken and prepare it yourself instead of buying stuff in parts. Because when they cut it up and they put it in parts, they start charging you extra. They start going, hmm, well, I cut it for him. Now I got to charge him more. And they just gave him the legs. Well, he wants his legs. He wants a box of legs. And then you give him that. And then it gets all crazy. But look, we got our chicken here. And then we got some mashed potatoes. And let's put some gravy on our mashed taters here. Woo! Well, I'm going to make a lake. Hold on. Here we go. It's pretty cool. It's like that volcano that Peter Brady had that just exploded all over the place. Check this out. There you go. Now look at that. And you can have it come. Remember when Richard Dreyfus made the mound of mashed potatoes in Close Encounters? It's really cool. So what I want you to do is send us some mail. Comments, questions, suggestions, or if you need a recipe that we used on the show, just check the address and the show number at the end. Tell us that self-addressed envelope, and we'll send it right back out to you. But for now, I'd like to thank you for joining us here on How to Boil Water, and we'll see you next time in the kitchen. Bye-bye. along with Sean and Kathy on how to boil water has just gotten easier. Now you can get a videotape copy.